Praise the Lord, church. Don't it feel good to be in the house of God today? First off, I just want to say that we're glad that Pastor and First Lady had a good time on their trip, and we're glad that they're back. We had some good church, but we're about to have some great church. <laughs> At this time, I want Brother Hunter to come and do our scripture reading. Praise the Lord, church. I'll be reading from Proverbs 23 and 12. And it says, Applying thine heart unto instruction and thine ears to the words of knowledge. There's always going to be people in your ear and trying to influence your choices and decisions. But you have to seek godly wis wisdom and counsel from the pastor and other elderly elders. And they are the ones who have your soul and your mind truly.
do something that should take him about a day to do, and he's been telling us three weeks it's going to be every single day. To the point I told Brother Jordan, just go get a different surveyor. We got to pay for it twice. I don't care. Let's just, whatever. Just to get it done. And, and, and Brother Jordan's doing, he's doing everything in the world to try to make it. It's, it's nothing to do with him. But my wife said, it's all, and Brother Jordan, you said it earlier. It's always, they always say, it's just one more thing that's got to be done. Then the next part, it's just one more thing. Well, I'm tired of one more thing. I'm tired of it. I, I got business for the kingdom to take care of. Hallelujah. So my wife said, we need some walls to fall down and we need to happen tomorrow. So this is what we're going to do. Brother Sagely, you lead every one of these ministers, including our three cadets out there on that property right now. And open that door up. We got enough air to keep it rolling. And I want y'all to sing again. And we're fixing to release a sound. I said, we're getting ready to release a sound. Brother Hoyt, you can bring your microphone out here if you want to. Go ahead and sing. Hallelujah. David faced a giant that mocked the living God. By faith he stood in power, and that giant had to fall. The Israelite people rivaled by a wall. But when the people shouted that a wall it had to fall, there is a sound that makes walls fall down. There is a sound. That makes walls fall down. That makes walls fall down. There is a sound. There is a sound. That makes walls fall down. That makes walls fall down. Release the sound. Release the sound. Release the sound. What about Paul and Silas? behind the prison walls but when they started singing Come on, let's praise him those for walls it. they had to let's fall. worship him for there is a sound let's quit asking and let's start down. worshiping him there for is a sound let's quit asking and let's start worshiping him for there is a sound there is a sound makes walls fall down Crucified Jesus was buried in a tomb. They thought his life was over, but three days revealed the truth. The resurrected Jesus, he's coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, and every knee is gonna bow.
up your hands. Release the name. There is power when you begin to worship and you begin to pray. The Bible talks about, listen, the Bible talks about that we can pour down strongholds. The only way you can pull it down is you got to reach up. And when you reach up and you pull it, you pull the strongholds down. You said, well, I ain't emotional. Then you're going to be very uncomfortable in heaven. Because we're not touching the tip of the iceberg right here of what heaven's going to be like. So what I want you to do, if you got a stronghold in your life, if you got something that you're battling against, if you got something that's warring against your mind, if you got a situation you need God to move in, I want you to get those hands up in the air when they sing it again. And I want you to visualize pulling those strongholds down. <laughs> pulling those strongholds down. Sing it again. What about Paul and Silas behind the prison walls? But when they started singing, those walls they had to fall. There is a sound that makes walls fall down. There is a sound that makes walls fall down. There is a sound that makes walls fall down. Crucified Jesus was buried in a tomb. They thought his life was over, but three days revealed the truth. The resurrected Jesus, he's coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, and every knee will bow. Like I told several young people that went to Camp Apex, the anointing didn't just stay at Camp Apex. It came here in this house today. There is a name that makes demons flee.
makes walls fall down. There is a sound that makes walls fall down. There is a sound that makes walls fall down. Release the sound. Release the sound. Paul and Silas behind the prison walls but when they started singing those walls they had to fall Cause there is a sound that makes walls fall down there is a sound that makes walls fall down there is a sound Jesus was buried in a tomb. They thought his life was over, but three days revealed the truth. The resurrected Jesus, he's coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, and every knee is gonna bow. There is just letting our voices go with no music right now and let that sound come from from heaven in this place come on he said if you don't praise me the rocks and the mountains will cry out ain't no stone don't take my place
My God, there's a sound going forth from heaven in this place. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. By God, by God, by God, by God, by God, by God. Come on, let's just feel after him right now. He la la lo 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 lo. la 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 la. In the name of Jesus, I curse it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Touch his body, heal him. In Jesus' name, let it be done. Let it be so. Make your way back to your seats. You can remain standing. We don't kind of throw it out of order. I'm ready to preach. Anybody ready for some preaching? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're making your way back. Again, I said it in the first service, but it's so good to be back in the house of the Lord and be back home. And um, we had a great, me and my wife both said, probably the best vacation we ever had, best cruise we ever had, best everything. It was very, very good, relaxing, uh, enjoyed ourselves, appreciate the men of God, uh, Elder Mills, both teaching on that Wednesday night and then preaching on that Sunday we walked in the Holy Ghost. Uh, I knew some things that um, that was needing to be dealt with that he didn't know, but God knew. And uh, he he preached about it during that service, and uh, and obeyed the Holy Ghost. And um, and then Brother Sagely done an outstanding job on Father's Day, preaching a passion passionate message brother nations that first service on the on that we were gone i done an outstanding job teaching and then brother hoyt uh last wednesday night uh done an outstanding job i i've heard every one of the men their messages but i, I in fact I, I heard them all live and and i was uh doing the other one uh brother hoyt's and then i talked about it in the first service Y'all were getting a very bad signal from the storms and everything. That it, um, the Wi-Fi was not good here, so I told them to cut the feed because the video wasn't good, and just to do the audio. So the audio is not live; it's for later. And so I was doing it yesterday. I was going to uh, listen to it, or more than one time, listen to it. The Lord told me I couldn't because I was going to be in the same vein as Brother Hoyt, and um, we'll see. All I know is what Brother Hoyt's title was. That's all I know. I do know the response that um, that uh, was very good Wednesday night from hearing from people. Uh, just the response to the altar call, what I've heard about, uh, needs that were ministered to, uh, faith was in the house, and I appreciate y'all responding. And uh, get behind these good men. I'm, I'm glad we got good ministers in this church. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said it in the uh, first service that um, I was 
Tuesday on the way home, I started getting sick. I think it's just a change of the altitude uh, and everything. Right now, I kind of wish I was in Alaska. It's kind of hot around here. And, uh, but um, it just a change of the altitude and the weather and everything, and, and it, it started hitting me Tuesday, and then by Thursday night, it got real bad, and then by Friday morning, I was at the doctor, and they put me on about six different medicines to try to knock it out, steroids and antibiotics and different things, and then it started hitting my wife hard yesterday. And um, so when I came here Friday, I'm just being transparent, I told the Lord, God, um, if you don't talk to me about this service, you don't have to do it tomorrow or either do it in a dream because I'm going home going to bed. Because I just did not feel like being here. And um, and so uh, um, I went home, and then I came back yesterday, and in just a short period of time, God began to speak to me about this service. And I feel like I got something from God. James 4 and 7, thank you, Brother Sager, for taking care of things. You and Sister Sager, while we were gone. James 4 and 7 says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Start with submitting yourself, therefore, to God. Resisting the devil is you quit listening to what the devil's got to say. Quit having a picnic with the devil. Somebody told me something recently. You cannot be powerful and having a pity party at the same time. But some people like their pity party because they like their attention. Let me move on. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. I'm going to read this first part here I want to use. And he will draw nigh to you. And then I'll read Numbers 2 and 2. It's not going to seem like none of these go together, but just stay with me. The people of Israel shall camp each by his own standard with the banners of their father's houses. They shall camp facing the tent of meeting or the tabernacle on every side. On every side. I'm going to preach this message. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now to preach it. It's time to turn your back on your problems. Let, why don't you just lay your Bibles down? Brother Sage, why don't you lead us in prayer right now? be seated. Thank for standing in reverence of the word. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 2 is full of, guess what? Numbers. Deep, ain't it? Throughout the chapter, the Lord is communicating to Moses and to Aaron how the people of Israel, probably about two million people in all, were to arrange camp as they passed through the wilderness on their way to the promised land. You see, it's easy to get lost as we read about which tribe is to camp in which direction. But notice, the Bible says, they shall camp facing the tent a meeting on every side. Picture two million people broken into 12 tribes with three tribes camped in each direction, the east, the south, the west, and the north. But in the center of it all, the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, where the Lord God Almighty had promised to dwell among his people. Imagine the clusters of small camps as far as the eye can see covering the sands of the wilderness. But each and every camp 
is intentionally arranged to face the tent of meeting. All the tents in Israel were arrayed around the tabernacle where the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire was. All of them had their tent flaps uh, that would be opening up their tent doors. Uh, then the first thing they would see in the morning uh, was they would see that pillar of cloud. Uh, when they would go to bed at night, uh, the last thing they would see uh, was the pillar of fire. From a military Strategic perspective. Elder Mills, this don't make much sense. Give me an example. When they would build the forts, they wanted to make sure to protect the weak sides. Maybe this side will be by water. Maybe this side will be by cliffs. But they're going to find out that weakest side and they're going to protect those sides that every side is covered. So that they know when the enemy is approaching. The wool wagon trains would get into a circle when the enemies, when the Indians would come. And that way they could see all the way around their enemy was not going to be able to come up upon them on a surprise without them knowing that it was happening. Here they are. They're out in the midst of the wilderness. And you would think that they should have had their tents pitched outward so that they can see any possible enemies that are coming to attack them. But God was letting them know, number one, I want to be the center of your life. I also, number two, want to be your hope and I want your confidence to be in me. We obviously live in very different circumstances today. You didn't wake up this morning in the wilderness of Sinai. But your camp, I ask you today, in what direction is it facing? Uh, what is the focal point of your home? Did you come to church today and all you got on your mind is the enemy that you've been fighting? Did you go throughout your week and all you can think about is the moly grubs of what you've been going through of the trials and death? Or did you wake up and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, man, you don't understand what I go through. My life ain't like you. Let's trade for about seven days. Hallelujah. You'll come running back. What influences? Shaping the beginning of each day in your life. Whose presence, whether that be a spirit of hell or people, dictates the direction of your week. How long would these millions of Israelites live in the wilderness without manna from heaven? And honestly, how long can our souls thrive in a spiritual wasteland that is, is this world it is if we consistently neglect the life-giving words that come from the mouth of God. Matthew 4 and 4 said, but he answered, said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. John 4 and 10 tells us, Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, Thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Living water, I'm here to tell you, it's freely available. But how often have I, intentionally or unintentionally, faced the challenges of the day and time, day after day, without it? God was the un unmistakable focal point of Israel's physical camp. It was a simple it was a daily reminder that he was to be the life-given heartbeat of everything. I'm asking somebody today, in what direction is your camp facing? Because some of the reason you're facing so much is he's been a long time since God's been the center of it all. And you want to tell me what's wrong with the church? I'm sorry, you can't tell me what's wrong with the church when God ain't the center of it all. A lot 
lot of times in serving God, we get our attention on things that we're having to deal with. We get our attentions on things that seems to be coming against us. We're trying to figure out what to do. We're racking our brain. We're losing sleep. But if we'll just turn our face back to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm putting all of my trust in you. I'm putting all of my confidence in you. That means instead of fighting this battle in my flesh or in my wisdom or in my intellect, I'm going to use the spiritual weapons that I have. 1 Samuel 17 and 45, then said David to the Philistines. Man, when they started talking, singing that song, Brother Martin seen that look coming over my face. I said, yeah, they hitting me. Sister Ashley started singing that song about David because I knew this verse was in there. Then said David to the Philistines, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. See, too many of y'all coming in your own name instead of coming in the name of the Lord. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. 2 Corinthians 10 and 3 tells us, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our carnal, or, or, or the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. To the pulling down of strongholds. You're the only one that can pull them down. You're the only one that can do it. I said, you're the only one that can do it. Isaiah 54 and 17 tells us that no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. It did not say that it would not be formed. It said it would not prosper. And that every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Hallelujah. I feel the pastor coming back on me. You go, la, 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 la. See, we, we got too many strife in the church right now. We got too much strife that should not be a part of the, uh, of the kingdom of God in this place right now. Well, I'm not going to them because they've done me wrong. Well, why don't we use Bible then? You said, who's been talking? Ain't nobody talked to me but God. I didn't need nobody to talk to me. You can feel some tension in the air. The Bible says if you go to the altar with your gift and you feel like your brother or your sister has it all against you, you leave your gift at the altar and you go to your brother or your sister. It didn't say that you was right or you was wrong. And you make it right with your brother or your sister. Then you go pick up. And if they won't accept you then, then you go with another brother or sister. Not behind their back. Oh, it's getting tight in here, but I got four-wheel drive today. Uh, and they, 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 you go with them and you say, I want to make this right. Not on the gossiping thing where you run across the church talking to each other. Woo, I, I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. God's revealing things to me right now. You better watch it because he may reveal a little bit more than what you want. And then if that don't work, we'll bring it before the whole church. But don't expect to bring it before the whole church, which is the man of God, until you've done your part. Don't come to me or my wife expecting you to fix your problem when you hadn't went to your own brother or sister according to the book. God didn't call me to be a police officer. Or a referee. My goodness. He called me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say let's do it the Bible way. Because if you can't get along with your brother and sister over seat here, how you don't make it to heaven? In fact, let me just tell you how. If you can't get along with them here, you ain't going to make it to heaven. I don't care how much you speak in tongues. Man, at least Jeffrey wasn't in the notes. Hallelujah. 
going back to my basics, we need to get off the milk and get off the, on the meat. And if you're, intense, if you're a part of the gossip, you are accessory to the gossip and you're as wrong as they are. You're a talebearer. But let's move forward. No weapon that's formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Well, I just feel that. But Brother Mills, you don't know what they said about me. Listen, look what they said about Jesus. Look what they say about your pastor. And I had to get over it. You know why I know that? Because sometimes people tell me what you say about me. Yeah, I really get worried about the people that get all pat me on the back sometimes because, well, what's next? This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And the righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. What you got a purpose in your mind is I'm going to wake up in the morning. And it's going to be about you, God. When I go to bed at night, God. It's going to be because I'm trusting you and I'm leaning upon you. God was teaching Israel something. You've got to have full confidence in me. You need to remind yourself that no matter what comes your way, your hope is in him. I'll keep my attention on him. He has my flank. He has my back. And I'm showing that I have my complete trust in him. We find in the Bible in Isaiah 38 and 1, a man by the name of Hezekiah. The Bible said in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and he prayed unto the Lord. And he said, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee that I have walked before thee in truth with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And the Bible says, then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, go and say unto Hezekiah, thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of the Assyria. And I will defend this city. Too often we try to face the enemy head on. And what happens is, Elder Mills, we try to take matters into our own hands and fix them. When this happens, we fight with carnal weapons and carnal emotions. Worry leads to anxiety. Anxiety leads to stress. But if I'll turn my back on the enemy, and if I'll turn my face towards God, I can begin to remind the Lord, Lord, remember every prayer meeting that I ever prayed. Remember every day that I ever fasted. Remember every day that I read your word. Remember every time I gave sacrificial. I remember God every time that I came to church when I didn't physically or mentally feel like it. When I was sick in my body but I pressed forward anyway. When I was discouraged and distressed but I pressed forward. I remember the times that I came to the altar and I poured it out because I did not know what else to do. Remember me, O oh Lord. Remember me. It was a thief that was on the cross. His back, his face rather was to his enemies. His face was to the verdict that had been rendered upon him. His past, his mistakes. But then he put his back to his problems. And he put his face towards Jesus. And he said unto Jesus, Lord... Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. 
whatever you're going through, whatever challenges, saint of God, that you're facing, whatever attack that you find yourself under today, and you're wondering today, what am I going to do? I'm telling you, turn your back to your problems, put your face to the Lord, and let him fight your battle. Because there's individuals sitting under the sound of my voice. You're wondering why you're fighting the same thing over, 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 over again. And I'm telling you why. Because God moves for you and then you take control of the battle all over again. If you want to fight the battle on your own, he's going to let you. But when you take control of the battle, you're basically telling him, I don't trust you to finish the job. Well, God ain't moving fast enough. Well, how was it working before God even started moving? Turn your back to your problems. Put your face to the Lord. I, I felt that when I said, turn your back to your problems. Your problems may be you need to turn your back on some people. I don't know why I'm telling you this. I'm going to have to add that cold down. Let it chip fall when it falls. But I'm telling you what, some of you got too many voices, and your voices are not lining up with this pulpit. And if it don't line up with this pulpit, it's not of God. I don't care how much internet preaching you hear, how much YouTube preaching you hear, I don't care. God gave you one pastor, and if it don't line up with what this is, you need to go find you another pastor. Because you ain't no me say without being submitted to the man of God that is placed in your life. Hallelujah. Man, I didn't want to come back and preach a message like this. Hallelujah. But I'm just telling you, some of you are fighting the same battles that you've been fighting for years. And it's simply because you will not take your hands off the problem and will not submit to God. And you want to have a pity party of what's going on in your life. If you want to fight it on your own, he'll let you. But I'm going to tell you what is one of the most powerful weapons. So, Brother Miller, I thought this was going to line up with Brother Hoyt. Here's where I'm starting to feel like. I have not heard this man. Where it's going to find out. One of the most powerful weapons in the hand of a saint of God to upstage and defeat the enemy in our lives. It is called praise and worship. Bible says in Psalms 22 and 3, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. God inhabits or he dwells in the praises. He literally comes and sits down in the very midst of the praises of his people. So whenever you start praising God, he comes down. And when he comes down, the devil's in big trouble. As Israel would go out to battle, as they would go out before the army, the singers and the worshipers would lead the army into battle. It was not the ones, Brother Sagely, with the spears and the swords. It was though they had the tambourines out there. They had the worshipers out there. Huh? They had those that were going to be the praisers that would go forth. Huh? It was clear that Judah expected a battle because they brought the army with them. Huh? But yet it was also clear that they expected a supernatural battle huh? because they let the singers huh, and the worshipers huh, go before the army. Why do we start the service off after we pray? with worship and praise. It's because we're going into battle. The word is the sword. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. But you got to have something that you send out in front of the army. And Sister Robbie, what we send in front of the army is we send the worshipers and the praisers. I have a hard time praising him, Brother Mills. You don't know the week that I had. Are we praising him based upon our feelings? Because God ain't changed. Some of the things we deal with is what I call self-inflicted. It has nothing to even do with the devil. 
we bring it on ourselves, and then we want to say that we're walking through the greatest trials of our life. No, we're walking through some of the greatest consequences of our life. But even in that, God can give us grace and he can give us mercy. So when I come into here, if I've had a good day, if I've had a bad day, I made it up in my mind a long time ago, he deserves my praise. He deserves my worship. And if I will do that, he will come down into the middle of my mess and fix my situation. In the book of Joshua, we see the God repeating this order again. He instructed Joshua, the general of the army, to arrange the army in a certain order. Seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horn leading the charge. They were to blow continually. It was when they blew these horns and the people shouted that the walls of Jericho fell down. I'm telling you, praise is powerful. They did not fall down when they got the battering horns or the swords and the spears and the the bow and arrow, it fell down when they began to praise. When you come into the house of God and you begin to praise God and worship God, when you've had a week where the enemy has attacked you to and fro, you confuse the enemy. You confuse the enemy. And the enemy is smart enough that when he realizes what he's doing is not working, he still move on to somebody else. So guess what? The old saying is, until the door is open, I will praise him in the hallway. I'm going to worship him in the hallway. I'm going to give him my all. I'm going to dance when I don't feel like dancing. I'm going to clap when I don't feel like clapping. I'm going to run when I don't. I'm going to lift my hand. I'm going to do whatever because I got a feeling if I'll do it, God will come right down in the middle of my mess. He will inhabit the praises of his people. And God will show up and fight for me. 2 Chronicles 20 and 15. And he said, Hearken you all Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Man, I'm, I'm feeling dangerous. The battle is not yours, it's God's. Turn your face to God. Quit posting on Facebook how nobody loves you and you ain't got no friends. All you're wanting is drama. My goodness. Lord, let me move on, please. Ooh, let me move on. Be not. This, afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but it's God's. Tomorrow, go you down against them. Behold, thou shalt come up by the cliff of Zia, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Gerald. You shall not need to fight in this battle. He literally told him, you, you, don't, you don't have to fight in this battle. Man, don't you like battles like that? There's going to be a battle, but you ain't got to fight in it. You, you don't have to fight in this battle. Set yourself. Stand ye still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you. If I could just get some people just to stand still long enough. Stand you still. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them. For the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord. And the Levites and the children of, you got it. And their children stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Brother Mills, I don't, I don't go for all that screaming and hollering. It's Bible, I'm sorry. 
I don't feel like the preacher should have to holler and scream. Well, then why did he say cry loud and spare not? Why didn't he say speak quietly and spare not? You argue with a book. Hallelujah. And they rose early in the morning. And they went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the Lord, with people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. And when they begin to sing and to praise the Lord, not until after they begin to sing and praise, did the Lord set up ambush against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. How many of your battles could be won if you would turn your back on your problems and your enemies and just come and praise God and come and worship God and come give him his due diligence? Praise is not just singing, though it is a lot of it is singing. Praise is confession, proclamation, thanksgiving, declaring the truth about God and his attributes. Praise is the breaker. It breaks open. It releases God into the situation. That is why God said, Judah, first praise. First Judah, before you do anything else. I want you to praise. Before you panic, I want you to praise. Before you even pray, that's why we start our prayer off with, I want you to praise. Before you complain or grumble, I want you to praise. Before you accept the bad news, I want you to praise. Before you give up, I want you to praise. But praise first, and you'll see that God will come through the door of praise. It was Adam and Eve. I'm not going to be much longer. It was in the cool of the day. And it was Adam and Eve. They were there in that cool of the day. Hallelujah. I, I don't know what's going on with my blood sugars today, but y'all just lift your hands real quick. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We good now. Hallelujah. I have... I, what's wild about it is I feel fine, but it happened in MIT. My blood sugars are in the 30s right now, and um, I feel fine, but the only reason I knew it was it was my alarm just started going off again. It done it in MIT class, so I'm not sure what's going on, but we're going to finish this message. I know that much by drop dead doing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to drop dead. My, it's just an act of saying it. We're going to finish it. Hallelujah. Adam and Eve's in the cool of the day. Jesus would come, or that God would come, and he would come and he would commune with them. When they started facing the enemy, when they started communing with the enemy, when they started having fellowship with the enemy, they turned their back on the God. I'm telling you, God desires to commune with thee. More than ever before. But you got to turn your back on your problems and get your eye on the real thing. You got to get your focus back. I said, you need to get your focus back. Some of you need to shake yourself and get your focus back. The church hadn't changed. The people of the church hadn't changed. It's your focus needs to be refocused. I feel this in the Holy Ghost as I was praying. I was right around the area of the Hoyt. He was standing there praying yesterday. The Holy Ghost spoke to me and said that the loneliness that some of you are feeling is not a loneliness for other people, but rather it's a loneliness that's been created by God that God is saying, I wish 
that you would turn your face towards me. Quit telling everybody else about your problems and start telling me about your problems. Because when you tell everybody else and you don't tell me, you tell me you ain't got confidence that I can take care of it. Have you ever seen your kid? I remember going through something when I was younger, some financial situations when I was younger. And I got myself in a mess. This was years upon years ago. And I remember my dad finding out about it. That's the last person I wanted to find out about. And I remember him saying, why didn't you tell me? Well, I'm, I'm going to be a man, you know. I mean, I'm not doing too good of a job about it, Brother Jill, but I just want to be a man and so I can take care of my own business and, you know, and everything. Why didn't you tell me and I could have helped you fix it? And I told him that. I said, but I was trying. He said, but I can't help you if I don't know nothing about it. Well, God knows about it, but God will not fix it if you won't take your hands off of it and release it to him. He said, I really want to help you. But you got to turn your back on your problems and let me be the one that takes care of it. Come to music. The Lord is telling somebody in this place, I wish that you would draw nigh unto me. For if you would draw nigh unto me, then I'll draw nigh unto you. There's an old song that I know our old timers know. I know the chorus, but I didn't know the verses, so I put the lyrics to put on the screen. But it's simply about turn your eyes towards Jesus. Boy, you know it, don't you, Sister Patsy? It said, oh, so are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's a light for a look at the Savior, and life's more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. His word shall not fail you. He promised, believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth shall, will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Oh, so are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There is light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. They would get up in the morning time. That flap, they would throw it open. And they would see that tabernacle. And they would see that cloud, pillar of cloud. And it was a reminder of God's presence was there. No, they didn't know what was coming behind them. They didn't know what enemy may be there. But they said, if I can just keep my eye on him, he'll keep his eye on there. They would go to bed at night, no matter what the day had encompassed upon them. With peace knowing that before they closed the flap of that tent, they would see that pillar of fire by night of God's presence saying, I'm with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But I'll go with you even to the end of the world. Let's stand across this place right now. I'm encouraging somebody right now. I had no idea what Brother Hoy preached about. But if I feel like the bane of what it is, is quit going around the mountain asking God to do so much. 
and just start praising Him in advance for it. Start worshiping for it. And watch what God begins to do and what God begins to move in every situation. I'm opening up these altars right now. I watched God move in the first service, but I feel Him here in the second service. I feel Him here ministering to needs if you will allow Him to be ministered to. If you want to go to home fighting your battle, you'll fight it. He'll let you take that battle home. He'll let you take that battle home. Or you can bring that battle to Him. He said, cast your cares on me. I care for you. But whatever you do, don't pick it back up and take it home with you. Don't pick up the battle and take it back home with you. Come on, I wish everybody in this place would come to this altar today. You may not need prayer, but how about praying for a brother or sister that's in need? I said, how about praying for one another? And be a part of the body of Christ. Go ahead, sing. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Be close, closer than before. Holy Ghost. Closer than I've ever been. Holy Ghost. God, I just want to be close to you, God. I don't want to be nothing in my heart. I don't want there to be nothing in my soul, God. I don't want anything in my life, God, is not right. Like in the worship sir, if you Take lift your hands and place, allow God to pour down Lord, new stronghold, that secret place allow God to pour down new stronghold. I can be with you, and you can make me like you. Wrap me in your arms, wrap me in your arms, wrap me in your arms.
let's just lift our hands all over this house right now. Thank you for what we feel in this house, what we feel in this place. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for your response to the word of the Lord. You can make your way back to your seats. We want our ushers to come. And we're going to receive our tithe and offering at this time, allow you to give to the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray over this. God, we thank you for those that came to give with a heart to give and a desire and burden to give. I ask you to bless it, bless them in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, thank you for your giving to the work of the Lord. Sister, uh, Sister uh, Mary and I, I believe you got a testimony. Go ahead and testify. right. Man. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. Great. I'm so thankful God kept his hand on everybody. It seemed like y'all had some stormy weather while we were gone more than one time. I'm so thankful for the protective hand of God. We want Brother uh, Either Brother Jerry, or Sister Christian, or both of you, whatever, to come with on Spotlight or small group and Cajun cooking group uh, this Thursday night. They can tell us, past Thursday night, tell us a little bit about what happened. Hallelujah. And we got time. I'm still, I got Seattle time still on my, it's only 2.26 right now. Hallelujah. So me and, Chris, me and Sister Christian got Cajun cooking night. And we had a, a great.
big time. We had 19 people. We had uh, some good uh, fish too, you know, and a red gravy with some uh, fish and red beans and rice. We had a great time of fellowship, and we had uh, some visitors. Sister Glenda's uh, brother came and her uh, sister Paulette. Yeah, she, she visited church a couple times, uh, and we, we talked to her, and it, it uh that night, and it, we know real good conversation with her, and uh, it, it was a great time, and I appreciate everybody that came out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get a seat here. I'm going to check in. I've got text messages coming in to me at the same time, so. All right. Um, are you saying you want to hold off till Wednesday to announce it, or not? Oh, you need to know. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, I had that in announcements. All right. In the uh, just a few announcements, right quick, and we'll let you go. Uh, again, thanks to all those who participated, whether it was Thursday night at the Cajun Cooking and the Breakfast Club this morning. Um, and then this coming week, small group meetings is Tuesday night, Taco Tuesday. More details on that. See the mayor, Sister Worley. Thursday, the ladies' lunch was uh, first lady at, at our home. If you're going to be coming to that, she needs to know that as soon as possible so she can prepare for how many is coming. And then Saturday, the thr Thrifters Club, uh, also Sister Mills. And then this coming Wednesday night, Children's Church and Chosen Generation uh, classes. Uh, next Sunday, uh, uh, we will have one service at 1030 due to kind of a holiday weekend, the way the 4th has fallen. It'll be July the 2nd, and we'll have pre-service prayer at 10, um, and classes will be dismissed right after worship, but we're going to have a church afternoon at the park in West Feliciana Sports Park. We're going to have a fresh fish fry, uh, but the Shannon's going to be heading that up with sides. Please bring your uh, drinks on ice now and your ball equipment, box snack cakes for each family. And uh, and so we'll be having a great time. Uh, great cool day out in the park. Hallelujah. And so looking forward to that. I want to say, my very last thing to say, thanks so much to um, those that took kids to kids camp, those that took youth to teen senior camp. We appreciate it. Very, very much, and I'm sure they had a great time. So thank you so much, parents. If somebody took your kids, let them know that you appreciate them doing it. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Oh, I'm sorry. Everything got through out of whack. I can't do it. He's outside. Just reach out there and get Brother Sagely. This will break him from stepping outside. Yeah, we prayed about it in the first service, but in the second service, for you that did not know, Sister Margie uh, had to go, uh, she had to go, the, end up going to the hospital. Her kidneys have failed her at 7% when they done the biopsy, and so she put her on dialysis. They put her on dialysis. But she, uh, um, I really, I, I'm believing God for a miracle. Uh, he's a miracle working God. And, uh, you know, and so uh, really pray for her. Pray for Sister Sally. Uh, uh, I, I appreciate, I know she don't She don't want me to say this or say this, but I appreciate Sister Barbara Anthony for the help that she's given both of them. Hallelujah, big help and um, and a, a big support there And because and they, I know they appreciate it. So, uh, but very, uh, let's continue to pray for her. Uh, you know, let, let, her, let her know that you appreciate her, you know, and everything. Send a text, do something like that. Uh, you know, whatever, just a, a word of encouragement, a card or whatever. I'm not sure. Sister, we really don't know yet as far as coming home yet, do we, Sister Barbara? Okay, I didn't think anything had changed on that, so let's just continue to pray on, on that. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Sagely, you and your, I don't know if you knew it or not, but tomorrow's y'all's anniversary. Okay, just making sure. And, uh, and uh, so I, 
brother, uh, brother and sister say, is it tomorrow 30 years? That's what I thought. 30 years of brother and sister Sagely. <laughs> well, I'm going to let you come get it and give it to her. Hallelujah. We appreciate them very, very much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Shake hands and be friends.